Greetings, everyone. It's Professor Fiori. In a prior video, we were looking at the effect of an electric guitar or bass pickup. That's a very challenging internal impedance. And what happens when we hook that up to a fairly standard bipolar transistor amplifier? The issue is that amplifier doesn't have a very high input impedance compared to the internal impedance. And we get all kinds of nasty results, like we lose signal, and more importantly, perhaps, we lose signal at different rates across the frequency spectrum, particularly at the high frequency end. We lose a lot of energy, and that will end up changing the characteristic of that instrument. In other words, the tonality will change. Now, one way of, of solving that problem is to use a circuit with a much higher input impedance. And we approach that by using a Darlington pair. So just to do a real quick recap here. This circuit will give us a gain of about 10. So the input signal, in this case, 100 millivolt sine wave, will give us about a one volt output. All right. Now, if you have eagle eyes here, you'll notice I've added a little capacitor over here, C2. Right now, that's only one picofarad. It's not going to play any role yet. But we are going to see what that effect is momentarily. But first, let's go back and just plot again what we saw with our circuit here with our um, Darlington. So we're going to do an AC transfer characteristic. And here is our plot. All right. Now we happen to have a, a decibel gain, 20 dB, which is a gain of about 10 in voltage. I'm going to change this back into ordinary form and let us set a lower limit here of zero and an upper limit of oh let's say 20 that should be sufficient Okay, so there's a gain of 10. You notice we're getting a small, very modest little peak over here, but this is occurring right about 20 kilohertz, which is the upper limit for hu human hearing, right, for young, healthy adults. Then it rolls off, but, you know, nice and, nice and flat below that. It's not really starting to roll off until we get down here into the 20, 30 hertz range. Lowest note on a standard, standard tune uh, four-string bass guitar is about... 41 ish Hertz right about here. So this is looking pretty good. All right. All right. Now there is an interaction with this pickup. So again, might look a little weird, 5k ohms, two Henry's of inductance, but you know, that pickup is thousands of turns, maybe 5,000 turns of very, very, very fine wire, you know, sitting around this magnet. So you know, 5,000 ohms is not a crazy number for, uh, you know, a 42 gauge wire, let's say. Um, and two Henry's, when you got five, 6,000 turns of wire, yeah, that's, that's quite possible. Um, we see C1, which is the input coupling cap. That's not really going to play a major role here. That's helping to set this lower frequency limit. But there will be some finite input capacitance, which is not seen here, but is part of the junction capacitance of the 3904 transistors, right? And in fact, what ends up happening is there is a series resonance circuit established between primarily this uh, uh, LP, in other words, the inductance of the, of the pickup, and whatever that input capacitance is, and the associated resistance, meaning the, the Z in or the R in, if you prefer, um, of the amplifier itself. As a matter of fact, by raising this resistance value, the Z in of the amplifier stage, we can more directly see this resonant effect that we're getting. So the very first thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to pop this up from 330k to 500k. And I'm going to redo our analysis. Okay, so we can see there's a little bit of a increase in this peak, all right? This is back to the 20 dB gain. Um, and since, in all honesty, we've already, we've already checked this out, we know that's a gain of 10. I'm just going to keep doing this so I don't have to 
constantly flip back and forth. Okay, now here's where C2 comes in. C2 is going to represent the capacitance of the guitar cable, right? We're just looking at sort of an idealization here of the pickup being directly connected to the amplifier, right? So the high impedance got rid of the issues as far as you know, the loss that we saw, as well as the high frequency roll off that we saw. And those were both pretty dramatic effects. While the capacitor, uh, capacitance of the cable is also going to have an effect because that's, as I said, part of this series resonant circuit. How much capacitance do we have? Well, typical for you know, something like a guitar cable, it's probably gonna be in the range of 30 to 40 picofarads per foot. So if you have a 10 foot cable and it's low capacitance, you might be talking two or 300 picofarads. You can find cable down around 20 picofarads per foot, but that's more the exception. And of course you can also find some higher, you know, like 50 picofarads per foot, but you know, 30 to 40 is pretty typical. So anyway, you had a short cable you might have a couple hundred picofarads of capacitance. If it's a long cable, you know, maybe you've got, um, you know, a 20, 25 foot cable, something like that. It's 40 picofarads per foot. You know, you're looking at, you know, 800 picofarads of additional capacitance. So what happens with this cable, right? Well, let's go in and change this value. So first I'm gonna pop this up to um, kind of a modest number. 200 picofarads. So this would be a low capacitance cable that's not super, super long. Take a look at the analysis on this. And wow, look at what happens. We get this huge pop up here, right? It's still gonna come in at around 20 dB, right? Here's 15, that's 30, right? So, you know, up here you're, you know, 20 something. So that middle range is still about what we expected, but man, look at this thing pop up. Okay, you've got a peak up here at 30 dB. And, and notice this is shifted down in frequency. Here's the 20 kilohertz we had before, right? Let me go back to the preceding one. So we had this modest little hump of just a couple of dB sitting over here, okay? Um, right around 20 kilohertz. Now I come in to the new version with the added capacitance and this thing's popping way the heck up here. All right. So, you know, where is that? Well, that's 10, 9, probably somewhere around 8 or so kilohertz is where this thing is peaking. Well, this is going to sound considerably different than the first one. You know, you've got an extra 10 or so dB, right, um, at, this, at this point. And, you know, 8 kilohertz, that's that's kind of pushing up there, you know, pushing up at the, the higher end. This is going to be a kind of a bright sort of brittle sort of sound that you're going to get out of this particular cable. Now let's push it a little farther. So let's say we, you know, we have more like a, you know, a 20 footer and it's, and it's, um, you know, 40 picofarads per foot. Wonk. All right, so again, there's 20, there's 30. We can see this peak's a little over 30 now. So the peak keeps getting higher and higher and higher, and the frequency of that peak is getting pushed down. So there's 1K, 2K, 3K. That's about 4 kilohertz now. You're getting into a, some really hot attack on this. All right. And, you know, the really high shimmery frequency stuff, you know, the stuff at 10, 15 kilohertz, as you can see, is actually getting rolled off now. You know, there's, there's a decent amount of, of loss here in this, upper, in this upper octave. You know, you're looking at five or more, five to 10 dB loss in that top octave. So that shimmer that you might be looking for is gone and you have more of an edge. You have a lot more bite in this thing. I mentioned earlier that you could play with this as far as the input impedance is concerned. Now, again, you don't want to go too low with this because that's going to uh, create some loss in the middle frequency. But I'm going to go back to the original 330K that we had. So again, remember this peak is sitting up here. It's over 30 dB, okay, 32, 33, whatever. Um, now let's redo that analysis. And you can see that, right? It just popped down. It's the same frequency but it just popped down a little bit. 
damping, a little bit more damping, right? Go back and forth between those. You can see exactly what's happening. Everything else is pretty much the same. It's just that little peak itself, right? And if, you know, we wanted to go a little further, I mean, you could get a little nuts here. You know, 100K is pretty low for an input impedance. And actually, that's, you know, 100K in parallel with Z and base, which should be a lot more than 100K, but nonetheless, do it one more time. All right, so there was a shift in level there. All right, notice that's a 40 dB scale. That's a 30 dB scale. But, you know, we're still sitting around that 20 dB. That peak is still sitting, you know, in the four-ish kilohertz range. But it's much more modest now, you know. You go back to the preceding one, really sharp, resonant kind of a peak. This one, not nearly so extreme, right? So the important thing, the takeaway from this is, something as simple as a guitar cable can impact the sound of the instrument. And this is going to be, have a, a complex interaction between the internal characteristics of the pickup itself and the input impedance of the amplifier. All of these things kind of roll together. Well, the question then becomes, you know, how do you, how do you minimize this effect? What do you do? Like, you don't want to have to go through a pile of cables to find the one that just works. And of course, I'm not, I'm not even talking about how, how effective the shielding is or, you know, the long-term reliability of the cable. I'm just looking at this strictly in terms of these electrical characteristics. Um, you know, I don't want to have to uh, always use the same length cable, the exact same, same kind of cable to get a particular kind of sound, right? It would be nice if it was something I could dial in and then use different cables. How do I get around that? Well, the, the classic way of doing that, or I should say maybe the modern way of doing that, is to have an active pickup. So an active pickup, is you know a regular kind of passive pickup except that there's an amplifier inside the guitar itself right inside the guitar or bass and there's usually powered by a nine volt battery maybe two nine volt batteries but by doing that you're talking you know maybe a couple inches of cable rather than you know 20 feet of cable the end result is the amount of capacitance that you get is essentially negligible you know, if I go back to, I mean, you literally, the wiring cable on that might just be a couple of picofarads. In which case, you know, the, the determiner for this whole thing is going to be the input capacitance of the amplifier itself. And that's going to depend on the design of the amplifier, but, you know, uh, that might be 10, 20, 30 picofarads. It's not going to be a ton. All right. So if we were to redo this, Come down here. You know, there's a fairly flat response. Okay, and there's our 10 kilohertz. We're getting a little problem because that 100K ohm, right? We can improve this a little bit. You know, like I said, that 100K was kind of kind of extreme. Um, but, you know, a 330, a 470K, something in that range is actually going to um, work pretty well. Right, and there we are, back to our original sort of response. Nice and flat out to 20 kilohertz. What more can you ask for? All right, there's really no reason for it to go any higher because you can't hear up any higher. There's no reason for it to go any lower. You can't hear lower. The instrument's not producing anything down that low anyway. So yeah, beautiful. It works. Okay. All right. So, you know, you go in lab and you try to set this up with a standard function generator. It's only got a 50 ohm internal impedance. And that's great as far as just seeing what the amplifier has uh, for potential, what it could do, but that's not what your source is, right? So you have to go back and look at what the driving source is. This is something a lot of people ignore. The internal impedance of the driving source is a very important thing. And if you really want to measure this and know, you can get you know, a modern uh, digital LCR meter which would allow you to check resistance and inductance and capacitance values at various frequencies. And you could check the thing, see what you have, right? Do you have, you know, two Henry's, one and a half Henry's, you know, whatever the heck it is, what's the resistance and so on and so forth. Build a model, 
just like this in your simulator and give it a shot. See where you go from there. All right. Okay. Have fun. See you next time.